Hey everyone, Tyson the Subaru Specials from Subaru Prince George here. Today we're taking a look at the 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness in that iconic geyser blue. That's the color you see advertised in all the commercials for both the Wilderness Outback and the Wilderness Forester. So what does the Wilderness get you? It's the most off-road oriented Subaru Outback they've ever made. So. Only comes with a 2.4 liter turbocharged boxer engine producing 260 horsepower and 277 pounds feet of torque. So lots of power in and out back. Aesthetically, the front bumper is definitely different. You've got way more black plastic cladding than painted area on the front. And that's the idea is the plastic's harder to mark up. And if you're taking this off the beaten path like they expect you to, it's harder, it, it's less paint to beat up, but it's very, very durable. You also get the anodized copper tow hook recovery points. You get the Gatling gun style, six LED fog lights, very, very bright. You do get the front view slash off-road parking camera. And then the grill is a little bit different than the standard grill. And you get this nice big black strip, decal, decal, sticker, whatever you'd like to call. And it's matte black. So the idea is this reduces glare for the driver. Matt will cut that sunlight. And I didn't think it would work that well. It actually worked surprisingly well. I was shocked. LED steering responsive headlights. Some of the stuff you can't see, you get a more aggressive final drive. 444 gear ratio. And you can climb steeper surfaces with that. On the side, you get chunkier, more aggressive fender flares. You get the exclusive 17 inch wilderness wheels in the matte black. And of course you get all terrain tires, the Yokohama Geolander AT. So it's not the most aggressive all terrain tire out there, but it's a good mix of off-road performance along with on-road handling, which is what all the manufacturers want. They want it to ride nice, but still very, very capable. They are actually snowflake rated. So they're winter rated legal for all the highways in BC. Wilderness badge, you get three of those on the outside of the vehicle gray mirror caps and up top here we've got a different roof rail system than the standard outback now these don't come with the crossbars that flip across these are thicker more heavy duty they're designed to hold rooftop tents overloaded to i shouldn't say overloaded toolies toolies with lots of stuff lots of cargo that's the idea behind that so you have to get the toolie extended crossbars because they have a higher weight rating the anodized copper here is not for tow hooks it is the ability to tie down. Easier to secure things on the roof. You get anodized copper Outback logo, a more aggressive rear flare. It extends onto the rear passenger door, which the others do not. And at the back here, instead of being a painted color match rear bumper, it's all that black plastic cladding because that's an area that gets marked up pretty easily, whether you're loading dogs in and out or cargo, backing up off road, you're going to scrape it. Again, less painted area to mark up. In the rear bumper, we have those little black circles, four of them. Those are your backup sensors. They'll actually apply the brakes if you think you're gonna hit something in reverse between speeds of one and 15 kilometers an hour. Best thing ever in parking lots. These anodized copper locations. Tow hooks, I'll show you the tow hook. Another Outback badge, or Wilderness badge, and then of course the Outback and the Subaru symmetrical all-wheel drive blacked out now. I love the practicality of an Outback. It's got the proximity tailgate. So long as the key's on your person, walk up, block the logo, it beeps, and you back up. Doesn't have to be done with your hand, could be done with a box of groceries, whatever you have. On the inside here, we have tons of room. Cargo tray is a standard piece of equipment that comes with a Wilderness Outback. Has a little bit of a lip to hopefully contain everything any spills, anything like that. Privacy cover, standard equipment. Now, this is two-stage, so the idea is that hides normal things. That's not a lot of load height. That's not a big distance to be able to throw things in there, so you just tap it, and it goes up. There's a second position there. Makes it easier. And then, of course, this is easy enough to remove if you need to. You've just got a little button right there. You click, and it actually comes right out. On the sides, grocery bag hooks, big Heavy duty, hard physical tie downs. You actually get eight of them. You got four on each side. Makes securing cargo very, very easy. You'll notice the right hand side seats are down and I can do that from back here. Plenty of room to sleep. We have lots of people that camp in these, lots of room. 
right hand side 12 volt power point underneath here handle you push in lift up there you go and this right here this is very forward thinking i like that it's a hook to hold the false floor so if you ever need to change the tire or grab anything else from underneath here you're not fighting it this is that eye bolt that toe hook that i was talking about so you would pop that off and this would get screwed in now i've had several people come and buy multiples of these because they have kayaks or canoes or something and they use those as tie down points when they have something on the roof very very handy it's also what tow truck driver may use to recover you from the ditch if you hit that wilderness gets a full time full size matching tire on a matching alloy wheel so you can actually do five tire rotations which will considerably extend your tire life i'm a huge fan of five tire rotations full size spares best thing ever now we do also have an led dome cargo light there and then we do have the ability to lock and close close or you can close it manually by pulling the handle but if i do this locks everything it'll close and then it'll beep just confirming that it's locked. And the way we can confirm that, we'll walk up here, pull the key fob out. Once does one click of the Subaru logo to opens the driver, two does everything. There we go. In the second row, it's really easy to, well actually before I flip these up, the back of this is rubberized. Not as rubberized as the cargo tray, but it's not fabric like the backs of a lot of seats. So if you have dogs in the very back, you know the dog hair is going to warm its way into fabric or cloth. This will hopefully stop that. And it is, again, kind of waterproofish, Water resistant, I should say. The Wilderness gets the soft touch all-weather upholstery in the States. It's called StarTex. That's the brand name. It's made by Subaru. It's 20% recycled plastic. The rest is a synthetic material. You can see it's very textured. And it's non-perforated. So the idea is... You can go hiking, biking, camping, whatever, get dirty, come on back to the outback, hop on in, drive home, and then you can just wipe it out. It's not to the level where you can hose it out, but it's kind of like leather, but not really. It's not cloth, it's not leather. It's a very cool material. This is a real big selling point for me with my dogs and the fact we're outdoorsy, way easier to take care of than cloth. And so far, no one's had any durability issues. At least no one's told me about them. You do get the anodized copper contrast stitching. And right here, we have the ability to recline the rear seat. And this is kind of hard to do one-handed. Probably gonna have to do it with my elbow, but you can recline that seat. So it's level and there you go. That's the most upright. The outer two seats in the wilderness out back, heated high and low, two USB ports for charging, and you have map back pockets on both sides and of course bottle holders in the rear of each door up top you get your tilt and slide sunroof and with it being the proximity key never needs to come out of your pocket to lock it we've got those lines gives you an eighth of a second to pull it wait a second and so the key has to be within about three three and a half feet on the inside wilderness badge power windows locks mirrors as you would expect bottle holder in the front driver and passenger door and the driver's seat is power including lumbar and it's that same star text seating material very very comfortable i really like the material you've got wilderness on the headrest there and these head headrests are tiltable which is a nice feature that not a lot of vehicles offer down in the driver footwell and front passenger you get the wilderness mats they're textured you do get these similar mats in the rear but no wilderness badge now with the sun glare that's going on right now i'm going to flip this vehicle around so i'm going to pause the video i'll be right back with you guys and we're back inside the wilderness outback so steering wheel tilt and telescopic which suits drivers of varying heights and arm lengths and leg lengths. I really like the tilt because I sit a little bit further back, but I don't like my arms driving straight out like a race car driver. It's just uncomfortable in the long run. So steering wheel initially looks very, very busy. We've got anodized copper, copper contrast stitching, and a bunch of buttons. So the left-hand side is really about Bluetooth and audio controls, make and take calls, control the volume of the calls and the music, change between presets, go next song on your audio, 
These pull towards your buttons will change the small. Center display gives you a bunch of different information depending on what you want to look at. I like time and thermometer. And the right hand side has to do with our adaptive cruise, the cruise that follows the vehicle at a set distance ahead of you, increase or decrease the follow distance. And it does give you a little image up there with four bars all the way down to one. Four bars at 100 kilometers an hour is approximately 150 to 180 feet behind that vehicle ahead of you. Very, very handy. Lane centering works above 60 kilometers an hour and both of those systems use the two color stereo eyesight cameras that Subaru's smartly located behind the windshield to protect them. They're looking for vehicles, lines, pedestrians. So if the cameras can see the road lines above 60, it'll illuminate whichever side of the road it can see, those gray lines will go white, whether that's one side or both sides. And it'll actually give you gentle steering input to keep you in the middle of your lane. It's great for the second half of a long day of driving when you may find yourself a little bit fatigued towards the end. We have the all important heated steering wheel. Now it does not heat between the seam nor right here, kind of where you're supposed to keep your hands super warm, gets cooking in the winter. I can only handle it for about five minutes myself. Now on the sides of the mirrors, we have the little black screens and that's your blind spot detection. And it illuminates like so whenever someone's in your blind spot on that corresponding side. So it does not eliminate shoulder checking, but it is a really nice aid. It helps cut down on incidents for sure. Now, Subaru has gone with the 11.6 inch touchscreen for the dash here, the infotainment, and they broke it into three portions. This top portion here, you've got widgets, you can change those around. You've got what you're listening to, the widgets again, weather, that's part of the satellite radio trial. It just decent defaults to DC Metro. We can change that to Prince George and then dual function X mode, which is exclusive to the wilderness outback in 2022. I think in 2023, one other model is going to be getting it, but this is 22. So we've got normal mode, we've got snow and dirt, and then we have deep snow and mud. So X mode is like four by four low in a pickup, a couple other differences, but it's essentially the equivalent to 4x4 low. Most people are never going to need to use it, but it is a nice aid. Got the center screen, kind of the home screen, your apps, your access to the My Subaru app, change your settings, your phone, your Bluetooth. And then at the bottom here, we've got our climb controls. Oh, no wonder it's so hot in here. Heated seats are on. So we can touch, we can drag, we can do that, or we have the physical button on each side. And you can see right now that it's synced together. So if the passenger wants a separate temperature, they can adjust it. And then if the passenger gets out, you hit sync. There you go. Very, very easy to use. Turn off the stop start. When you put it in reverse, backup camera automatically pops up. Rear assist braking's on, parking sensors are on. You can see the top of the bumper there. It's, it's a little hard to see in the shade there, but it is there. And you can see that green box. The sensors are telling me there's a container behind me. Don't accelerate at it. Now, I do also have access to the front camera. It's almost 180 degrees. You can see right there, there's my coworker, Candace, and she's out the side there. So quite, it's got quite a range of view, which is very handy. Great for parking lots coming out between two big vehicles or on the off-road trails. Now, below that, we have our parking brake. Pull up to turn it on, foot on the brake and push down to get it off. Wireless charger. Light is white, meaning that it's ready to accept something. When you put a device in and it's charging, that goes blue. We do have two USBs for charging, doing Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, listening to music, aux cord for music. Now. I get asked this all the time. This is a wired connection in the 22s. The 23 Outback and Legacy are gonna be the first vehicles to offer wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I'm not sure what that looks like yet. It's coming, we'll see it hopefully soon. View button for the front camera. We've got drive and then we have manual mode. If you wanna use your paddles to select your gear, you can see it says one, first gear. You can start in second or I can downshift back to first. And you have that option. It'll only let you go into certain speeds depending upon the speed that you're at. Can't start in sixth gear. We have our auto dimming rear view mirror. So no switch to flick. This is my favorite feature ever in any vehicle. Just dims if someone's got their high beams on behind you. And what you can see right there, that's the home link button. So you've got three buttons right there. I accidentally pressed it when I went to adjust the mirror, but that's what it looks like when it's trying to pair a, uh, a garage door opener to it. So you can have your garage door opener 
not on your visor, not taking up room. You just program it to your mirror. You have the built-in compass. Up top here, we have SOS and roadside. That's part of the three-year trial of the connected services you get with most new Subarus. Once you're enrolled, that little light will go green to let you know that things are good. We have sunglass storage, the ability to make it so that the map lights come on when you open a door or not, and then sunroof controls for the regular sized sunroof. Get a nice little bit of airflow in the outback on a road trip. So that is a quick look at the 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness in the geyser blue. I'm Tyson, the Subaru Specialist from Subaru Prince George. If you guys have any questions about this vehicle, any of the tech in it, any of the features that I may not have gone over, or if you have any questions about anything in the Subaru lineup, please put them in the comments below. I do try to get back to all the comments and queries that are there. Again, Tyson, the Subaru Specialist from Subaru Prince George. Talk to you guys soon. Actually, I'm back. I didn't show you guys something. Skid plates, because that comes on the wilderness. So, aluminum skid plate for the front, and I get asked about this all the time. You can get a couple accessory skid plates for these. Gas tank skid, and then there is the rear differential skid, so I'll show you guys that as well. Not the best view. I do have one of a Forester up that covers those skids. I just haven't been in the shop, because I'm not actually supposed to be when they've been PDIing and out back, but there's the rear differential skid as well. They're not overly beefy by any means, but the, it's gonna handle most of the average off-roading that the average person does. There we go. That's a quick look at the 22 Wilderness Outback. Talk to you guys soon.